Welcoming Golf Week senior writer Beth Ann Nichols. Beth Ann, a happy new year. Um, let's get right to it. What's the significance of the women playing Muirfield? You know, I'm actually feeling the same way I did when the women were going to play the old course for the first time in 2007, where, of course, Lorena Ochoa won in stylish fashion and, and the women were able to go into the RNA clubhouse for the first time. So it was uh, it was a, it was a magical week in many ways and a big a big sign of progress. And I think for a lot of players, young players, 2007 was a long time ago. And so this will be interesting for them to, to learn that the men have been playing major championships at Muirfield since the late 1800s and the women are about to do it for the first time this summer. So, you know, there's a little bit of the, uh, wow, what, what took you so long, of course, since women only recently became members there as well. But, but a sign of progress and and hope for the future. So I'm I'm lo really looking forward to it. Beth Ann, we're saying hello to Muirfield, but we're saying goodbye to Mission Hills out in Rancho Mirage after what 50 years. What are you hoping to see mm -hmm. from the last appearance there? You know, I actually now that you mention it, another Lorena Ochoa kind of party. <laughs> that was one of my favorite my favorite wins was uh, you know, when Lorena won and 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 everybody seemingly jumped into Poppy's pond. So, you know, I hope all the the former champions of this great event come back uh for, for the week. And and I actually wrote this in a in a column last year. I, I really hope they find a way to take the celebration to another level. And, and while they have all the past champions, all the, all the greats there, celebrate the founders and put Shirley Spork into the LPGA Hall of Fame and celebrate her and the rest of the founders and, and allow her to accept that honor on behalf of, of all the, the founders who, who have already passed. And, and, and put Lorena in as well. Like, just, just live it up here. <laughs> Let's do some things that are long overdue and, and celebrate what this venue has meant to the LPGA, this tournament, uh, for for 50 plus years. I uh, love the ideas and I'd RSVP yes to that party well in advance. So <laughs> now that we're at January 5th, New Year's resolutions are kind of out the window. It's time for bold predictions. So what's your bold prediction for 2022? Well, sticking with the majors and, and another great, you know, I'm, I'm looking at Annika Sorenstam and I'm thinking, how can she not play at Pine Needles? She has yet to to officially commit to the event, though I, I understand from her husband that son Will is lobbying very hard that Annika plays. Uh, the only thing is that the following week is the tournament she hosts in Sweden, uh, the Scandinavian mix with Henrik Stenson. So there's a little bit of a schedule thing, but I feel like she could easily pull off both events back to back. And I think she could make the cut, which sounds crazy because Annika last played in the US Open, of course, back in 2008 and, and famously hold out her final shot for Eagle and as Annika would do. <laughs> but, you know, when she made the cut last year at Nona, of course it was her backyard, her home course, but players were saying that it was set up like a major championship. And of course, Annika has won at Pine Needles before, has tremendous memories there, was was fr close friends with, with Peggy Kirk Bell and and I, I, I think she could do it. I mean, what's the biggest test of a, of a U.S. Women's Open is is up here. And, and she's, she recently won a major championship, for crying out loud. <laughs> well, Beth Ann, Annika was part of the last rivalry we actually had in this sport, either men's or mm -hmm. women's, with she and Carrie Webb going back 20 years at this point. We're on the cusp of another one now. Do you think we're going to see it with Nellie Corda and Jin Young Ko next year? Gosh, I hope so. And I, and I really see no reason why we can't, why we won't. I mean, uh, last year it was a little unique in that you felt like they each owned half a season and, and that it was Nellie's for the beginning of the of the first half of 2021 and then, then Jin Young Ko the second half. And then they kind of merged there at the end and the, the final two events to see, you know, who would be player of the year. And I would love for it to be this back and forth throughout 2022. And, and I think we'll see both of them hoist major championship trophies. I, I think this will be fantastic for the tour because I really don't think we'll see a player like an Annika or a Lorena win eight, nine, ten times on the LPGA anymore. I think the talent is simply too deep globally. And so the next best thing it is a rivalry. And I, I think that's what we're going to get. Yeah, we've been saying the same thing on the PGA Tour. To, to see someone win six, eight times, it's just such a deep depth of field. So final question here before we let you go. Uh, who will be your newsmaker of the year in 2022? 
<laughs> well, you know, this, this is actually kind of breaking news in a way, um, in that Brooke Henderson uh, is going to have to get a new driver. And, and Brooke Henderson is one of the the most entertaining players on the LPGA. She, of course, grips down on her driver, grips down on all of her clubs, and and is one of the the longest, most aggressive players on tour. And and she's going to have to go to a 46 inch driver because the LPGA is going to institute the the model local rule, uh, beginning with with the what was formerly known as the Kia Classic, uh, the JTBC in uh, in March. So. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this impacts Brooke because, of course, she's a 10-time winner on the LPGA, and we're all expecting big things from her. And she's been using a, a long driver since she was 15 years old. So this will be a, a big adjustment for her. And unfortunately, we won't have the great shot length stats to really show us the, the nitty-gritty details of how it all um, goes down for her in, in the coming months. But, um, but I'm, I'm really interested to see how this impacts her. Yeah, uh, it's definitely something to look at going forward, especially from a weight standpoint and the fact that she had choked down historically. So uh, how much of an impact will those two inches be? It could be uh, substantive. All right, appreciate it, Bethann.